Let me tell you the story. All right, tell us the story. It's just better over that be a better background. Yeah, go on. The, the, the light's better too. Turn over. Okay. Yeah. I do like it. All right. So, I ran into, forget this. I'm, all I want for Christmas are two front teeth. You get them in January. So, I know. <laughs> so, anyway, I ran into Jimmy Thomas Kalashia coming up the stairs. He said they want me to talk. I hate to talk. I hate to be interviewed. Can I give them your name? I said, all right, I said, well, why don't we get up on stage and talk together? We'll have a conversation. He said, no. Oh, come here, you lovely, beautiful queen. You're yes. getting <laughs> history. Oh, gosh, so you're getting <laughs> put in an interview by Randy himself. So anyway. Oh, there so you go. <laughs> Jimmy and Carmencia said. A couple of old queens <laughs> on the street. Uh, Where that? else would they be? <laughs> <laughs> Where we belong. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Well, you wait. have every brain cell you were born with. I don't think so. I, that's why I'm having them film me now. So I asked Jimmy Carmesia about Marshall. Why? Some stories. So I asked him about the cross, which he, in his book, she's coming across town, but she's wearing this skirt, which I didn't know, with hearts pinned all over it. Mm. She had a big part in her show, but she was carrying the cross for some reason. People began making fun of her. She got mad and hit, smashed the windshield with a cross, and they took her to Bellevue. So he said after that, he would never put her on with anybody. So then he said, Taffy Tits. I always wondered what would happen to Taffy Tits. Taffy, we know. Taffy, I didn't know. But he said that Taffy Tits was with him, and Marsha was the kind of person, he said the thing that made Marsha great was that she was unlike most people on the stage. Get this. She was unlike most people on the stage. She was there for the audience, not for her own ego. Mm -hmm. Now, in the interview he did with Joe Jeffries, has after it's pay it no mind, he talked about her being out there. She was so real that people just loved her. So he was happy chits with, with, with Marsha. And he said, he said, look, he said, when Marsha goes out there, she has a magic. She just wraps the crowd. They're going to laugh at everything they, you, she says. And if you say anything, you're not, they're not even going to hear you. He said, that's just the way it worked out. The Tavis just said, oh, I can handle anything. And went out and watched just said what I heard she said. And just how it connects with the crowd. They laughed their heads off. Tavis said, said something, got no response at all, whether they even heard her finally. I thought that was an amazing thing. I said, let me film you on camera. Just tell me that Marsha was there for the audience. And he said, it's very rare to show you. And uh, he won't, he said, oh, I hate it. They give you two pages of the contracts and I read it all over. I said, I know you give away all your rights for all eternity on every planet in the universe and beyond every galaxy, right? Forever and ever. <laughs> the death do you part. <laughs> If ever that comes. buried in the archive, like Jack Smith said. Yeah, but he told a wonderful story in the Joe Jeffries interview after yeah. Paying No Mind. Mm -hmm. He talked about how she had a certain, you just knew she was so real that what she said just connected with the audience in a way that no one else did. Well, well Marsha was so authentic that that's real and everyone else is artificial. Right, right. Yeah. That's what he was Phony saying. Phony baloney. He but, tells but us not one, Marcia. He's the one that tells the story about her coming in and she said, Oh, can I take a bubble bath? And he said, Okay, it was candlelight. He hadn't paid the ice cream bill. And she said, Oh, how romantic. And the bubbles began bubbling over for a bunch of and they start going downstairs. Apparently, it was holes in the floor. Yeah. Said, well, I, have a bath, I had a bathtub in the kitchen tenement, and she used all the different colors of bubble <laughs> bath. And so downstairs, they had a rainbow on their bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> and they came upstairs and knocked on the door. And, and, and Augusta said, oh, my God. And she said, they're knocking on the door. Open it, invite them in, invite them to have a joint. And so he did. And they turned out to be best friends when he moved out years later. They helped him move out to his new apartment. She brings everybody together. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I've got it run off. So God bless you. Oh. And Fred, Fred How old are you? Tell me that. You never told me. Let me know. I'm younger than you. I'm, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm going on 87. You're not going on 87. I am. I'll be 87 in two months. 
you don't look at. You that doesn't matter, gentlemen. <laughs> you wait till I get a little zumpic. I'll be like over. Give me dust or give me old something. You could pass. I'll commit suicide with old something. I'll be the first famous one. You could part of this pot belly that sits in an eighty. The hell with getting fat when you're old. You could pass. I say with the 65. young farmer. I I'll pass from forty five after I get this weight off. Work out of the gym. I'll be thirty five. Oh, then, well, I'm 39. Then they put, they put me in the cuckoo. Cuckoo bit because I'll be around when I'm 21. <laughs> you, you, you could know, vote them. You know Marsha's <laughs> turning 80 in August. Oh, dear. Really? Yeah. Did, when is August? Did this year or next year? Next year. Did they have birthday parties? What 